right. Hi, my name is Tiff Butler and I'm from Junior League and I'm gonna read to you as part of Read Across the Shoals. This is my dog Gatsby. And while I don't have a book about him, I do have a book about another famous dog. So Gatsby, you go hang out, do what you wanna do. But I'm gonna read you guys his royal dogness, Guy the Beagle. So this is a story about a rescue dog that was rescued by a beautiful lady. And she actually became a duchess, which is kind of like a princess. So this is about Meghan Markle and her rescue dog, Guy the Beagle. All right, here we go. So my story begins, like many, in the woods of Kentucky. So you can see he's like playing with squirrels and being cool. I was lost and living alone, surrounded by tulip trees, myrtle brushes, and cranky squirrels. I don't know any other kind of squirrels, do you guys? Let's see if you can see the illustration. But as luck would have it, a nice person found me and moved me to an animal shelter. So the animal shelter there. I soon learned that an animal shelter is a lot like a public restroom. You want to spend as little time as possible in one. See these cool people? Sadly, despite my best tail wags, no one in Kentucky came to adopt me. I'm not sure why. My ears are like velvet and my paws smell like corn chips and I have a superior sniffing nose. I'm a catch. See guy all by himself. You know, there's a lot of dogs that have um, corn chip smelling feet. It's by a bacteria that their feet make, but my puppy has them too. See? So I was packed up and sent to an adoption event in Toronto, Canada. And that's where I met her, my forever owner, Megan Markle. I absolutely adored Megan. She and I did everything together. We went on walks, played fetch, and binged watch episodes of Suits. So if you don't know, Meghan Markle was on TV and she was on the TV show Suits in Canada. That's where they filmed it. So you can see the illustrations. But I wasn't the only one. A human loved Meghan too. His name was Harry. He was tall and debonair and had hair the color of a traffic cone. But more importantly, he was a prince. And the kind you read about in fairy tales and supermarket tabloids. Oh, can I touch that? Prince Harry loved Meghan so much, he asked her to marry him. Which meant Meghan was going to be a duchess. And I was going to be a royal dog. I was so excited that I chased my tail for 24 hours straight. But I was really nervous. After all, I didn't have fancy pedigree papers. I was just a regular dog. I put on this collar. I was just a regular dog who put his collar on one neck at a time. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna fit in. I knew Megan had to get the queen's consent to marry Harry, but would she welcome me to the royal family too? Megan scratched my head and said, don't worry, guy. They'll love you. The royal family loves dogs, especially Queen Elizabeth. They'll fall in love with you and your velvety ears and your corn chip paws, just like I did. And that made me feel a lot better. So off to England we went. And we got to start our new lives at Kensington Palace. And what a palace it was. There were huge fireplaces to curl up next to, and antique furniture legs to gnaw on. And the royal guards were all wearing black poodles on their heads for some reason. The palace gardens were incredible too, and there were so many proper and well-mannered squirrels. 
It was dog heaven. But my transition to English life wasn't all kibbles and roses. I was confused by their customs. In England, dogs go to the bathroom on the left side of the hydrant. See? And instead of sneakers, they chew on trainers. And my doggy sweater was replaced with something called a doggy jumper. Whoa, the corgis. If you don't know, Queen Elizabeth is really famous for having a lot of corgis and they're very fancy. Things got bad when I met Queen Elizabeth's royal canines, Sir Vulcan the Great and Madame Candy the Equally Great. Hello, I said. And they said, Bip Bip, Cheerio, Collie Wobble, Bob's your uncle, replied Vulcan. Pardon me, I don't speak British. Very well, said Vulcan. As a royal dog, you'll never say an uncouth hello when greeting someone. You bow with your neck like this. Oh, I'm sorry, I said. No, 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 said Candy. You never say I'm sorry either. You blame it on the Prime Minister. Such as, the Prime Minister is the one who made the mess on the carpet. I was embarrassed. I had so much to learn about being a royal dog. Meanwhile, Megan and Harry were busy getting ready for the wedding. There were gowns to try on and cakes to taste, flowers to arrange, and handwritten wedding invitations to all 65 million Britons. They inspired me. I was determined to be the perfect royal dog for them. So I enrolled in the prestigious Westminster Doggy Obedience Academy, which boasts such illustrious graduates as Winston Barkhill. He sh we shall chase tennis balls on the beaches. We shall chase tennis balls in the fields and in the streets. We shall never surrender chasing tennis balls. Or Charles Dogwin, writer of the groundbreaking text, The Origin of Belly Rubs. Or Ringo Starr, Beetle. <laughs> but despite all my training, I kept messing up. I ate half of Prince Charles's Cornish Yard sandwich. I shed hair on the throne. I ate the other half of Prince Charles's Cornish Yard sandwich. And I dragged my butt on the palace carpets. Things got so bad that Vulcan pulled me aside and said, Tally ho, you're off your trolley and cheeky cookaboo. Which roughly translates to, you'll never get the queen's consent to be a royal dog acting like that. He's pretty judgmental for a pup. And the English paparazzi. Oh my gosh, do you see this? Sit, stay, embarrassment, fire and furry. Trump starts war with Husky. Chew toy discovered on moon. And equally unkind. Faux pas guy tracks mud on royal carpet. Bigfoot has a pet pug. I felt like I was in the woods of Kentucky, lost and alone. <gasps> Look how pretty it's Megan in her wedding dress. And then the big day finally came, the royal wedding. It was incredible. The pageantry, the crowds, the ridiculous hats. Megan looked gorgeous and Harry looked handsome. Everything was absolutely perfect. Everything except for one thing. Me. Who was I fooling? I wasn't a royal dog. I was just going to ruin Megan and Harry's special day. See how sad Guy looks? Hmm. So sad. I was feeling hopeless when in walked Queen Elizabeth. She looked upset, and I thought for sure it was because of me. But to my surprise, the queen said, Oh dear, Guy, I can't find the sprig of myrtle for Megan's bouquet. It's been a part of every royal bouquet since the 1840s. I simply must find another one. I knew what I had to do. I ran out the doggy door. I put my superior beagle nose to the ground, and I searched the palace gardens for the myrtle plant. 
a scent I knew all too well from my days in the Kentucky woods. I sniffed on top of statues, I sniffed in the fountain, and I sniffed around all the hedges. I sniffed everywhere until, <gasps> brilliant, I found it. I, I grabbed a small sprig in my teeth and ran back to the queen as fast as my legs would carry me, feeling rightly chuffed. That's British for cool. Hey, I was getting the hang of this British thing after all. And the queen, the queen was overjoyed. Even Vulcan and Candy were impressed, shouting, Scrummy Hunky Dory, which translates to, Who's a good boy? Ooh, can you see? Yeah. Seizing the moment, I climbed up in the queen's lap and asked, Your Majesty, can I please be a royal dog now? The queen laughed and said, My dear guy, you don't have to save the day to be a royal dog, and it doesn't matter if you're a purebred corgi from Wales or a stray dog from Kentucky. All that matters is that after the wedding, we will all be a family. Really, I said, moved. Yes, said the queen. You don't have to be something you're not. You only have to be what you are. And what you are is a smart little beagle with velvety ears who is loved by Megan and Harry and me. I smiled and licked the queen's face. I was going to be a royal dog after all. And with that, the queen leapt to her feet. Well, slowly she got up. She's 92 and said, let's go for a ride, guy. We have to get this bouquet to Megan. Can we both stick our heads out the window, I ask? Absolutely, said the queen. And that's exactly what we did, all the way to the royal wedding. The end. And that's Harry running after them to catch the car. <laughs> and if you guys don't already know, it went like this, yay! So in real life, this is a true story. Megan did have a rescue dog and I think puppies are really important. And if you have a pet, you guys should, after we finish the video, you guys should talk about your pet in the classroom. And um, just know that everybody's got pets and things like that. And if you don't, I'm sure you have a sibling or a cousin <laughs> that could be your pet. <laughs> um, but. At Junior League, we really, really like reading, and we think it's super important. We're so glad to be able to read to you guys, and, you know, in the middle of COVID, we couldn't come visit you in person, but we are going to be sending you these videos this week, and if you'll jump on those YouTube um, channel that this is on, you can see all the other books. Some of them are for, excuse me, different ages and different things like that, but Thank you so much for letting us read to you, and we hope that you love literacy, reading, as much as we do. If you live in Lauderdale County, you can go visit our little library that we have. Um, and then if you are in Russellville, we have a little library there also. So if you want to find out more about Junior League, you can go to jltheshoals.org and learn more about us. Thank you, and happy Read Across the Shoals Week.